we will use the Hanafi Mazhab as a default, and if we will need to sort of point out uh, differences in a particular uh, in, per in any particular details, we will we will point them out and we will highlight the differences. But generally speaking, we will just use the Hanafi Mazhab as the default. Keep in mind that the, the disagreements between them are not extremely consequential because it is, they're all disagreements over preferences, not over validity and invalidity. Because it's basically washing and, and shrouding. Uh, there is not much that would be a matter of validity and invalidity here. Just there are very few instances. For instance, the Malikis and Shafais, they have Madmada and Stinsha. They have basically mouth rinsing and rinsing of the nostrils, like you do a Madmada and Stinsha for the living. The Hanafis and Hanbalis, they don't have Madmada and Stinsha, but they recommend in their stead uh, some degree of cleansing with a, a cloth you know, that you wrap around your finger and you do uh, rinsing, like what, what, you know, and wet it and then clean the teeth and the nostrils with this cloth. Uh, but they don't have Madmala and Stinchak per se, uh, where you put water into the mouth of the disease, deceased or the nostrils of the deceased. For the Madikis and Shafais, uh, you need to do that. So this would be one of the bigger differences. But aside from this, and, and particularly with uh, Shroud and Gadis are all matters of preferences. And oftentimes these matters are not based in the text of Revelation. There is nothing you know, that is concrete here. So when they say this is preferred, you do this, you do that. Uh, like when the Hanbaris say that you have the incense go with like, uh, the of fear, or, yeah, huh? Perfuming the place? No, no, not the shroud, the, the place itself. So the, the Habayis would say, leave it on all the time from beginning to end of the rest and washing, and the Hanafis would say that you do it at the beginning, and you go around the table like three or five times. The, uh, but, but these are all differences that are not consequential from a legal standpoint in the sense that they do not result in invalidity of the uh, rituals. Okay, so basically uh, washing, you, you bring the, the deceased, you put the deceased on a high surface, you put the deceased or the cadaver on a high uh, surface and you strip them from their clothes except for uh, the aura. So for the, if we would have a man, then uh, we, uh, and certainly um, the people that are washing in this case, that may be also something that we go over quickly, uh, men would be washing the man, women would be washing the women, the woman. There are certain cases where men may wash women and women may wash men. If the deceased is a man, if the deceased is a man and he had a wife, all of the Mazahib agree that his wife may wash him. Some people may think in the Hanafi Mazhab the wife does not wash him. Uh, but she does wash, wash him because she is in her idda at this point. When the man died, she is in her idda. And since she is in her idda, she is a wife. Right? She is in her waiting period. So she is still alive. So then the former that have agreed that if the man died, the wife may wash him. Because she is in her idda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they also say that you need to limit the number of people to the bare minimum that can do the job 
So one person and one helper, or one person and two helpers, the minimum number of people that can do the job. Because this is a matter that should be, you know, discreet and should be private as much as possible. So you're not inviting the whole neighborhood to watch the deceased. It is uh, usually two people. One main washer and a helper. Yes, no, no, not the daughter. In this case, it will be the wife and so, yes, son, or a wife and a fa the father of the deceased, for instance. If the deceased was a woman, then here is where the Mazah disagree. Uh, Malikis, Shafais, and Ahmad Hanbalis would say she's, that he still washes his wife. Hanbalis would say no because Hanafis would say no because they are not married anymore. Since she died, he has no waiting period. So they are not married anymore. The three Nazareth cited the, the Prophet said to Aisha, what would be wrong if you died first and then I took care of you and I, you know, washed you and shrouded you and buried you. And then she said to him, and then you will go out and get married to another woman. So uh, the, that, uh, in that discussion the Prophet told her that if you do pass on before me, then I will do this to you. Uh, anyway, uh, that is just like a, so some disagreement here in, uh, if, the, if this deceased is the woman. Now, if the deceased is a man or a woman, and the wife or the husband will not be taking care of this, then people of the same gender, preferably maharim, you know, will take care of it. It is important here that we keep the number at the bare minimum that will be able to perform the job. It is also important that those people will be trustworthy, righteous people. So if they see something good, they tell of it. If they see otherwise, they conceal it. So if you see, you know, the light on his face, for instance, you go out and tell of it. If you see a smile, you go out and tell of it. If you hear, if you smell a good odor, you go out and tell of it. The opposites of this, you can see. Keep it to yourself. You do not speak of it. Yes, sir. Um, can we use as Adilla that uh, Fatima uh, was washed by Ali bin Talib? No, and, uh, I'm not getting into the, the, I'm just, I'm briefly, very briefly, I'm not getting into the fiqh, you know, the disagreements. Uh, which I'm just explaining that this is their position, this is what they said, and briefly just mentioning one example of proof that this side mentioned or that side mentioned, because the purpose here is not to say which one is wrong and which one is right, the purpose is just informational. This is not a fifth class where we get to the bottom of it. We're not getting to the bottom, we're just providing very, very superficial information. Yes? You mentioned something about, you know, it's preferred that a man does the gospel. Does that apply to the men as well? Is it a preference that, uh, you know, the family members do the gospel for men? Or it's only applicable to the women? It is applicable to, to anyone. That, you know, uh, the closer relatives, if they are available to perform the gospel, then they are preferred. But the bottom line is, if it is not a wife or a husband, it is the same gender. Not a wife or a husband, it is the same gender. If it is not the same gender, if you do not have someone of the same gender, then you will be performing the ammo. There are some disagreements over some details here, but if you do not have a spouse, and you do not have someone of the same gender, you will be performing tayammum for the deceased and no washing. That's it. Is that clear? So if a woman dies in among the men, they're traveling, and there is no spouse, and there is no women, 
Those men will give her tayammum and just bury her. The, the, and vice versa. If a man dies in the midst of women, they will give him tayammum and bury him. Yes? Can you please explain how can you give tayammum to a dead person? Same like that? Yeah, but you'll use your hands instead of his hands. So you'll strike the, the dusty ground with your own hands and then uh, do the face and the hands. The face and the hands up to where? There is a little disagreement here on the madhab. Even the madhab that was setting up to here, per default in tayammum, you know, for the living, the, in case of the deceased of the opposite gender, they'll just limit it to here. So you do the tayammum like this, you strike the dusty ground with your hands, and then you wipe over the face of the deceased, you st and then you wipe over the face of the, uh, the hands of the deceased, wearing gloves, hand power or gloves. So that is basically as far as who would be washing. Here, inshallah, we will not try into big problems. Most likely, you will be able to find people of the same gender to do the job, because there is a lot uh, of both genders here. Uh, but this is why it is also important for the sisters to learn this because we do need sisters to be able to wash the sisters. Then, so when we talked about the washer who's going to be washing, we talked about the etiquettes of this and, the, and the also, you know, we talked about the importance of being trustworthy, what can see anything wrong that he sees or she sees. And then uh, they'll put the deceased on the surface, they will uncover the deceased except for the aura. Which means what? These are the knees and this is the navel. That is, that's it for the man. This part will be covered for uh, the man. Uh, if this is a woman, she's being washed by women. According to the majority, that's still the aura for the woman, in front of women, from the navel to the knees. And, so, you know, there is, there is, but in real life, uh, then there is the opinion that I believe to be stronger, where uh, the aura between women is the best in men, the occupational dress. Like she can cover the neck to the part of the chest, the arms and legs up to the knees in front of women. And if she had to breastfeed, she could do this also in front of women, but somewhat discreetly as much as possible. Uh, but anyway, according to the form of that, the aura of women in front of women is like the aura of men in front of men, which is navel to the knees. And, uh, but then, so the recommendation here is to have some uh, loose dress to dress the woman and some light loose dress where you could uh, stick your hand inside the, the openings of that dress. So, or to just extend this sheet over to provide her more, you know, sick covering and then uh, start the washing. When you start the washing, the, you will begin by istinja, and that is basically according to all of them. Now, in the Hanbali Madhab, you do squeezing of the abdomen. You don't do necessarily in the Hanafi Madhab. You don't need to squeeze the abdomen. But if you squeeze the abdomen, the Hanafi Madhab will not, you know, 
necessarily uh, fault you because it helps uh, to avoid troubles afterwards. So if you do some gentle squeezing of the abdomen and then the excrements come out and then you wash them away, then it is less likely that you will have trouble with them coming out afterwards after you have done the uh, washing. If you uh, squeeze and then something comes out and you squeeze and something comes out and you squeeze and something comes out, then you just need, need to block that orifice or that opening so nothing comes out. And then after you wash the private areas, you proceed with giving wudu to the uh, deceased. According to the Maliki's and Shafi's, it's like just wudu for the living. Hanafi's and Hanbali said, except that you do not need to do magmada and stinchak for them or put water into their mouth and nostrils. All you need to do is to get a piece of cloth around your finger and do this for the teeth and this for the nostrils. Just a superficial cleaning or cleansing of the orifices. After you have finished your giving wudu to the uh, deceased, you will start with the washing. The way you do the washing is you never put the deceased on his face. The deceased is on his back or his sides. So after you have done the wudu, you put the deceased, you, you wash the deceased like this uh, on his back, starting with the right side, and then you tilt him on his left side so that you could do complete washing of the right side and the back on the right side. And then you put him back and you tilt him on the right side now so that you can finish the washing of the left side, including the, the left side of the back and the uh, uh, legs. Yes? Are we considering this in that part of the loop or before? Before. Yes, before the wudu. Uh, so then, yeah, you know, but, but because you said the word necessary, what is necessary is to just to, to wash the whole body with water, and that's it. We're we're talking about if you want to do it the perfect way, but just pouring water on the body making sure that the whole body has been covered by water is it. If we're talking about necessity. But we're not talking about necessary, we're talking about the description of the perfect host. Yes? The first is the wudu and then the wudu. The first is the wudu. Wudu and then the wudu. Yes. And you turn the body to slightly to the left and wash the right side first? Yes. So basically, because you want to wash the right side first, you tilt the body on the left side so that the right side is up, so that you could wash the back of the right side. And then you tilt the body on the right side so that you could wash the left side, including the left side of the back. Okay. Now, the temperature of the water is a little bit interesting uh, because according to the Hanafis, it is hot. According to the rest, it is cold. The Malikis don't really pay attention to it. Hot, cold doesn't really matter to the Malikis. Shafis and Hanbalis will use cold, and Hanafis will use hot. It's not hot like, you know, yeah. And so for any of the perfume stuff, anything for Yeah, the perfume thing is, is coming. We're we're yeah, we're not done yet. Do you use salt? Huh? Do you use salt with the water or 
you use soap after you use soap in all of the washes uh, except for the last wash where you do not use soap. So, um, also the first wash you may or may not use soap. The last wash you will add perfume to the water. That perfume does not have to be any particular perfume because the uh, it depends on how literal you are, but uh, uh, it's just a perfume to make sure that certainly you don't get like an al alcoholic perfume because of the controversy over this and you want to be safe here. But any perfume is good for you. If you can buy, get the camphor, which the Prophet named in particular, then that would be nice, great. But if you can't, then you can get just any perfume that is non alcoholic perfume, then it is fine. And you add it to the water to give a good uh, smell. And after you have done with the washing, then you, you perfume certain areas. Uh, which are in Madhavan or Madhav Sujood, which are the skin folds and the areas with which your body meets the ground in Sujood, the spots of your body that meet the ground in Sujood. Here, 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 here. The purpose for the Madhav Sujood is to honor them. The purpose for the skin folds is that this is the area that does need to be. But these are the areas that do need to be perfumed because they are usually not good smelling. Do you comb the hair? Clip the... When you go back on the first one, uh, when you said the perfume in the body, the certain areas, can you go back on that? Yeah, you perfume the skin folds, skin folds, and the moda is to do the spots of the body that meet the ground when you prostrate the spots of the body that meet the ground when you prostrate. And then you will start the shrouding. So you uh, dry the, the, the body up and then you start the shrouding. So you remove uh, combing the hair and then this is a matter of controversy. So uh, many scholars, well, the majority, said you don't comb the hair, you don't clip the nails, you don't uh, trim the mustache. You don't do any of this. The Hanbalis clip the mustache, clip the nails and trim the mustache and keep it in the same, uh, you know, keep it within the shrouds. But for your practical purposes, you don't need to do any of this. You will just use your hands to make it look as nice as possible. And the purpose why they recommended against combing the hair is that they do not want the hair to come out with combing. For a woman, Yes, that is a good question. For a woman, you will do her, you will give her three uh, braids and you will put the braids uh, between the dirr and the second layer of the shell. So the braids will be put on her chest after you dress her up in the dera. The dera is the garment that is from the neck down. That is called dera. For a woman, it's called kamis for a man. The neck down garment. Dera for a woman or kamis for a man. And then you get the braids and you put them uh, on her chest. After you put the dera on, uh, so that braids will eventually be between the dera, that garment, and the second layer of the shrouds. <laughs> you braided her hair. The shrouding part the dera, are we on that? Yeah. How, how did we start the sh like, the bus? The sh no, no, the shrouding you said the first. So how? Uh, the, I will come to the shrouding now. I'm just to get, getting the, the the braid issue out of the way. How many times do you give the bus? Like you said, the last and the last. 
three times up to seven. If you need to repeat because there is a lot of dirt and so on, then it is three to seven. Three is sufficient. If you need to repeat because you have not done a good job, you could repeat three, five, or seven. And it is preferred that you make it an odd number, not four, five, not six, seven. So if you need to go beyond three, go up to five. And if you need to go beyond, beyond that, go up to seven, if three were not enough. Because the Prophet said in the Taqseed of Zainab, Sinah uh, Thalathan, فَإِنْ شِئْتُنَّ فَزِدْنَا إِلَى سَبْرٍ Wash for three times, and if you would like, increase up to seven. So my question is... I'm making the question is... I'm putting the last one... A four camphor or, or a little bit of camphor? Yes. Uh, going back to the process of washing, right? So uh, the people who are performing the washing, do they have to be in their wudu themselves? Is that required? That is preferred. Preferred. Yes. If you're running a little bit long time, um, being late to the, the, the salah or something, can you do less than three of the or is three the minimum? One is the minimum in terms of the necessity. Three is the minimum in terms of the perfect. Adna kamal thalatha. Al-mujzah wahida. So what is sufficient in terms of validity is one. What is the least to that least proper number is three. And then more is for the need of cleaning more because you have not completely cleaned the body. Or because when you are cleaning, some, some majasa came out uh, from the orifices and you needed to redo. Yes? Is wudu uh, considered one of the three washings and the second being the natural sit and the third being No, the wudu is not one of the three times. The wudu is pre-wash, but then we will have three different washes after the wudu. Three, five, or seven. And then you will remove the deceased. We said you dry out the deceased, you remove the deceased, and then you, it depends now, if it is a man or a woman. If it is a man, you will, you will dress him in a kameez, according to the Hanfi method. You know, the majority will not dress him in anything, they will just use the shrouds. In the Hanfi method, you will dress the man in a kameez, you will dress the woman in a, a dera, which is like a kameez, but it's like a dress, from the neck down. And you will add to the woman a khimar. And then you will add two uh, uh, other layers. No, it is an actual kameez. It is an actual kameez. But for the majority, it is not. For the majority, with a woman, they dress her in regular clothes. For the man, they just shroud him in three different layers and that's it. So the man, for the majority, is not dressed in any kameez, is not dressed in any piece of garment. Is not dressed in any piece of garment. It is just, you know, uh, 
but let's use the Hanafi as the default. Uh, so here you're covering the man like this, and you'll dress him in a pamis, and then you will start by covering the left side. If, if, you may have learned it according to another method. Yeah. Because in the majority, you cover from the right side first. You throw the, the shroud, the first layer. You don't cover the body with anything. You just throw the first layer from the right side onto the left shoulder and then the second and then onto the right shoulder. Second layer, third layer. That's for the man, as we will see downstairs. But uh, for the Hana uh, Hanafi, you cover the left side first and then you put the right side on top. So you're coming from the left and you cover and then you cover the you know the right will be on top. Left and cover will be right will uh, be on top. Uh, so the, the woman will have uh, two additional layers than the man and she will have the izar which is another layer of shrouding and she will have the khimar or the makna which is the covering of the head and the Hafiz also set the face. And then she will be shrouded. So you will sort of dress her up like usual and then you will add the shrouding uh, to her. For the man, he will not have the khima for the head and the face and but he will have the tamis according to the Hanafi Madhab, not according to the majority. According to the majority, he doesn't wear anything. He just gets shrouded in three layers of uh, plain cloth. White, preferably. Not necessary. And the same for the woman in other religions. She will not be dressed up in Hanafi, she will wear that. No, the woman is dressed. Yeah. Uh, at least in the Hanbali Madhab, she is dressed in Izar, wa Makna, wa Dera, which is like three pieces, three items of clothing before you add. That is Izar, which is the lower uh, wrap around garment, Dera, which is the dress, Makna, which is the large khimar that covers the head and the upper and body. You could dress her from her normal clothes or you could buy new clothes for her. But normal clothes is basically preferable because the, you know, it's not wasteful. Yeah. And that's what Abu Bakr advised, that his own garment will be used to. And he said that the living is more deserving of that which is new. Yes? Hey guys, can you make the, the khamis for a woman out of the shroud that you used to wrap them in? Mm -hmm. Like if you fold it up, cut a hole in it, and make that the khamis? No, possibly. That's valid? Possibly. Keep in mind that there is a necessity or a bare minimum which is just to cover the body. It doesn't have to be a sole garment. Uh, it doesn't have to be. And, and then once you have covered the body entirely, the necessity has been fulfilled. The requirement has been fulfilled. All of these details are about preferences. Yeah.
There is no ihram here. There, there is no similarity to ihram here. She is not in a state of ihram. To avoid the stitched garments. And whatever is practiced may be completely <laughs> unrelated to the theory. Because in practice, Muslims coexist and they just learn from one another and everything gets sort of squished in this pot and, and everybody's doing something and they think that this is what we do in our method, but it is actually something that they just uh, caught from someone else. Uh, so, so, but, so, but, so the bottom line is you, you don't really uh, just get frazzled over, over it. it. It is very simple. Wash the entire body, cover the entire body, and you will be fine. At the end of all of this. So wash the entire body, cover the entire body, you will be fine. So we go down. Clothing, yeah, no, but if, if you actually go to the morgues here, they, they, they do just like such a meticulous job. Uh, so it is not impossible. Indeed, yeah. dress and ties and everything. And, uh, 